السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم ایس این ویلکم سو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی سیون آف واگر برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دی ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از سکر پرائسنگ ویچ از اسٹیپ نمبر سکس آف فیز نمبر تھری آف دی اسٹریٹیجک برانڈ مینجمنٹ پروسیس وی جسٹ فینش ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی پریویس اسٹیپ ویچ از کمیونیکیشن اینڈ فرام دیر وی ناؤ گیٹ آن ٹو پرائسنگ After uh, you have determined uh, the brand's positioning and uh, have decided about uh, the right uh, the channels uh, the for uh, distributing your brand, uh, you also are uh, the clear about the brand architecture and uh, you have uh, the crafted all the, the right most uh, the strategies for your communication. The next step is pricing. Uh, pricing is uh, the very important and at the same time the delicate uh, the topic because uh, It is something which makes the difference between a higher level of contribution and a lower level of contribution. Let me tell you what contribution is. You have done the basic course on the content and finance. Contribution basically is the price minus your direct costs. And whatever you get after subtracting the costs, meaning direct costs from the price, you get contribution. So in other words, if you have a good level of pricing, your contribution will be higher. If your pricing point is lower, your contribution point also is going to be lower. And since we have to deal with the brand as an asset, we have to see to it that this asset is driven by a pricing strategy, which gives the company the optimal level of contribution to be able to Uh, achieve with all the financial objectives. I think it goes without saying, if you have uh, a good level of contribution, with your objectives in terms of uh, with all the ratios uh, to sales and um, to investment and so on and so forth are going to be uh, viable. Uh, but therefore, uh, this is the, the wish of any company to go for a price which is the premium price. But that is not the case in the practical life. And uh, the why is it that uh, different brands command the different pricing levels and uh, the different companies could have different strategies uh, for pricing? One thing that we have to uh, keep in mind is, and I keep repeating this thing, that uh, all the, uh, the marketing strategies uh, relating to your brand are going to stem from two basic strategies, uh, one being the strategy of segmentation and the other being the strategy of differentiation. Pricing also is a function of these two areas. I think it is obvious that if you have a higher level of differentiation, uh, then your pricing should be premium. And uh, if differentiation is uh, minimal, then uh, the price point will go down. But What is really important to discuss is, uh, despite the fact that uh, we introduce brands uh, which relate to uh, the certain uh, the segments and uh, they're out there in the market trying to fulfill uh, the certain uh, the well-established and well-defined needs, uh, we still do not go in the right way to determine the price point. But why is it that we have to look into that? Well, generally speaking, There are companies which are aggressive in terms of pricing, and there are companies which are quite very conservative. If you have introduced a brand with all the quality points and are not in a position or somehow decide not to go for the premium pricing, the fault lies with the company, meaning with you. If you have introduced a brand which is not very highly differentiated, and uh, it uh, has been created on the basis of a certain solid rationale. And uh, the pricing which you charge is premium. Again, could you have gone wrong. So the objective is to go for uh, the rightmost price so that you can achieve your uh, financial objectives. In the worst possible case, the operation has got to be viable. And if the operation is not viable only because you did not charge the right price, 
uh, then again, default lies with the management. Pricing, therefore, is uh, something which determines the level of value with which it offers to a company and uh, which a company generates uh, by commanding a certain level of price. So pricing has to be uh, worked out, keeping in view, uh, first of all, that uh, every brand is an asset and the asset value of the brand has to be driven um, in the most practical way so that you can uh, generate a decent level of contribution to be able to achieve your financial goals and pricing has to be worked out keeping in view uh, the margins. Uh, you have to have the right margins and uh, the higher the price point, the higher the margin and the lower the price point, the lower the contribution margin. The most ideal pricing, of course, is the premium pricing. Uh, but then the question mark is, can everybody go for the premium price? Because uh, the practical uh, the sets of circumstances are uh, hardly ever the most uh, the ideal uh, the circumstances. And therefore, uh, going by the circumstances, uh, you have to decide uh, where the price point uh, should uh, really be located. In order to be able to do that, uh, we have to uh, take the support of uh, the brand architecture uh, strategies. That makes our job of pricing uh, less difficult. In other words, it makes uh, the job very practical. If we are dealing with uh, an umbrella strategy, for example, uh, then essentially what we are doing is we are trying to gain power from the brand which already exists. And we have an umbrella, and that umbrella carries just one brand name. And the reason that we decided to extend our brand or extend our line, you will recall from the discussion on the brand architecture, is that um, we want to give our new brand or an existing brand the overall power which the umbrella enjoys. And uh, if we are following the umbrella strategy, it becomes less difficult, or rather I would say that it becomes easy for us to command a premium pricing. Now, this goes without saying that uh, we have to have uh, a product and uh, the relationship between the brand and the product, uh, which really uh, defines the good quality. Unless uh, we have uh, offered something uh, of very high quality, which really offers the customer value, the meaning good performance and um, a good service, that we really cannot go for uh, a premium pricing. Now, let me tell you also that premium pricing is not something uh, which uh, um, is talked about by the customers in the marketplace. Premium pricing is a terminology for you people. Uh, if you are uh, charging a premium and the customer accepts that, then in the uh, eyes of the customer or by his perceptions, it is just about the right price. So the talking about the, the customer value, that you are offering uh, a brand which uh, offers good performance and uh, just about the right price, and it is serving its customers the way they want. So in other words, if you have uh, the right most channels kind of, through which uh, your customers are being served uh, the way they want, and uh, you also have uh, the, uh, the most practical the branding strategy in terms of uh, the brand architecture, then the chances are uh, the premium pricing is going to work. Source brand strategy or uh, the endorsing brand strategy it also uh, offers uh, you the opportunity of uh, the charging premium. Uh, because here also uh, what we are trying to do is uh, the generate power uh, with the help of uh, a very strong source. So a strong source offers the power to with all the brands uh, that source is endorsing and uh, that makes things uh, uh, fall in place uh, in terms of uh, the charging a premium uh, pricing. Now again, uh, this is a strategy which is uh, used by companies which are very well established and uh, which really have uh, uh, brands of, um, I would say, great power and therefore, uh, these are the companies that uh, easily 
find themselves in a position uh, to be able to charge a premium. And again, the rightmost price for the product they are selling. The question here emerges, what is going to happen if you are a new brand and a new company? The chances are that you may not be able to charge a premium price. A premium which you define as a premium. In other words, the rightmost price. What can you do in that kind of a situation? Well, you have to leverage your brands through other strategies. Not that you cannot leverage your brand with the help of pricing, but the, the strategies which essentially are going to play an important role in terms of leveraging your brand are going to be your know, communication strategy and uh, your channel strategy. So you can get into the co-branding. And uh, that is the concept that we talked about uh, in uh, one of the lectures um, in the recent past. Uh, co-branding really uh, offers you the opportunity of uh, leveraging your brand with the help of another brand uh, which is stronger. Of course, uh, there are uh, the pros and cons, and uh, one of the cons that you are dealing with if you are a new brand is that um, the other brand is going to be a stronger brand or is a stronger brand, and uh, therefore it may try to seek a greater part of the advantage that uh, they generated through the relationship of uh, the co-branding. Well, that is something that has to be looked into with the help of uh, this another strategy. But um, the, the possibility remains that uh, you really can join hands with somebody else in order to go for, if not a premium pricing, at least a decent level of pricing, meaning uh, a realistic price point which offers the company decent margins and uh, to keep your operation viable and uh, enable you to, uh, to generate ratios and uh, uh, the financial results uh, which may not be the out of this world but uh, which still are decent. So we can um, uh, summarize uh, this talk uh, like uh, the following. Uh, that there are uh, so many different uh, conditions under which uh, you uh, are in a position to charge uh, the premium pricing. What are those conditions? Let's take a uh, look at that. Uh, we are, for the time being, uh, going to talk about a premium pricing model. But don't lose sight of that fact. The stronger the brand, the greater the potential to charge a premium pricing. That goes without saying, and that is very obvious. Uh, up until now. Uh, the consumers are willing to pay more uh, for a strong brand or a stronger brand uh, because uh, they feel very comfortable paying a premium or from their point of view uh, paying a price uh, which is right uh, by their standards or uh, by their perception. A strong uh, brand extension or line extension uh, also allows you uh, to go for a premium pricing. Why? because it allows you to go for a launch which is not very expensive and you will recall that is one of the advantages of extending your brand because the launch costs are manageable and launch costs are not very high as those would be in case of a brand which was not extended meaning an altogether new independent brand so when you have these kind of costs under control that they give you the better margins. And when you have the better margins and you can control your costs, naturally you go for a good price level and you go for a good price level because the brand name is already familiar and it is popular. And that is why you decided to go for that extension. So on the one hand, what is happening is the people are willing to pay a premium pricing for that familiar name and a quality product. On the other hand, you are controlling your costs, keeping those at a lower level. Well, I don't say at a low level. I say at a lower level and thereby enabling you to extract the better margins. You are charging good pricing and you are generating good contribution margin because you are controlling your costs. So what is happening is, you know, 
you are gaining dual kind of benefits. But by the same token, when you are in a position to control your costs only because you have decided to go for a brand extension or line extension, uh, you also are in a position to recover those developmental costs within a time frame which is shorter than it would have been otherwise. And you know what I'm talking about. Meaning, if you had decided to go for um, a, a new independent brand um, which had entailed um, higher costs, then the margins could, would not have been that great. And um, the, the differential could, between pricing and um, the costs uh, could, would be on a lower side, uh, the meaning lower uh, contribution margin. And uh, could also, uh, could charging a premium pricing would have been much more difficult because uh, the people generally hesitate to pay as much price uh, as they're used to paying for a brand uh, which is very well known and which is very well established. The larger the base of uh, the loyal customers, the greater the chances that uh, the more and more customers or those customers uh, will pay a premium pricing. And uh, it is precisely uh, for this reason that uh, the managers uh, work so hard uh, through so many different means to retain their customers uh, because uh, they know that retaining their customers uh, cost much less as compared to creating the more customers, meaning new customers, and therefore uh, retaining them leads to uh, their turning into loyal customers and loyal customers are the ones who in most cases uh, do not bother about uh, the pricing uh, factor. Now, this is not to say that uh, they are willing to pay uh, prices which may be unreasonable because the one fact which you must never lose sight of is that uh, you've got to be within the mainstream of pricing. The people have a perception of the lowest possible pricing uh, within that segment and they have uh, the perception of uh, the uppermost uh, the limit of um, pricing within that segment and you've got to stay within those two limits. Whether you decide to be at the bottom or to be at the top or somewhere in, in between, that is your choice, but you just cannot afford to be outside of the upper limit. So loyal customers are the ones who always are willing to pay a premium pricing. A strong brand charges premium and the people are willing to pay that premium and when I say people, uh, what I mean is not only your final consumers, ultimate consumers, but also your customers in the form of uh, intermediaries. Why is that? They accept that uh, the pricing pattern, despite the fact that uh, their investment level goes higher when the price of a brand is higher. They are willing to do that because um, a strong brand that has the ability to charge premium offers good profitability to all members of the trade. And when everybody is making good money, of course, everybody is happy. And uh, therefore, it becomes easier to charge a premium on a strong brand. Another thing, you know, what happens here is, uh, I'm talking, uh, I'm gonna talk about something which is a little away from this topic, uh, that a strong brand gives you a leadership role and because of that leadership role you become much more effective within the community of your channel members and you can call the shots. The meaning you really can influence the intermediaries into following your decisions and it is because of this strong brand which commands a premium pricing that you assume that legitimate power uh, you will recall from uh, one of the lectures and it is the legitimate power which really gives you the power to influence others. So when you are um, having a strong brand not only you are charging a premium but it also leads to so many other avenues uh, which really can have uh, the highest level of potential to take you to the destination which is your brand vision. A strong brand uh, also offers um, the opportunities like uh, the licensing 
uh, franchising and uh, the co-branding. It goes without saying that if you are uh, the licensing your brand, uh, it happens to be a strong brand, and that strong brand is going to uh, charge a premium pricing because uh, if it is not in a position to charge a premium pricing, the mechanism of licensing and franchising is not going to work. You will agree with me that um, the, the mechanism of uh, the licensing and franchising uh, has an inherent uh, character of uh, jacking the cost up. You license out uh, your uh, good brand to somebody else and uh, you make your profits and uh, the licensee or the franchisee uh, has taken uh, your brand uh, because of its power and potential and uh, therefore uh, he knows or she knows that uh, they really can uh, sell that brand at a price after adding their margins. And in those kinds of cases, their margins um, almost always are uh, pretty well padded. And uh, this is not to say that uh, you must uh, fleece the customer. Never. Uh, you have to serve the customer. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, the powerful brand or a strong brand um, has the power to uh, offer so many different uh, opportunities in terms of licensing, uh, franchising, and also co-branding. I was talking about co-branding from the point of view of uh, your being a new brand and therefore your being a weak brand or a weaker brand. And then uh, the joining hands with a strong or a stronger brand in order to leverage yours. Now here is a situation in which you are talking about your brand which is a strong brand with a lot of power and um, you therefore are there to offer uh, weaker partners to come join you uh, on a platform which uh, offers potential to the both of you in terms of leveraging. So opportunities like uh, licensing, uh, the franchising and uh, the co-branding, uh, if uh, capitalized very strategically, uh, offer you a lot of value uh, in terms of uh, the financials and uh, also the marketing goals, meaning financial value as well as market value. But we can uh, figure out three facts uh, from uh, the conditions that uh, offer us the opportunities uh, for uh, premium pricing. And uh, those three facts can be summarized as the following. Number one being that uh, there is a very strong relationship between the brand strength, uh, pricing, and costs. These really are very closely related. Uh, because uh, when the, the brand is strong, you go for a you know, high price or a higher price. And uh, when you go for a higher price, uh, it gives you a better opportunity to go for uh, better margins. And uh, even if you're not in a position uh, because of the competitive pressures to go for uh, a price which is as much uh, high as you would have liked, you at least are in a position to control your costs uh, if your brand happened to be very strong. So the, uh, the margins come to you either through a good level of pricing or your ability uh, to control your costs. Number two fact that we really can extract from the conditions which uh, we just uh, discussed is that uh, strong brands offer the added benefits and uh, since the strong brands generally sit at the top of the value pyramid, uh, the customers are uh, more um, willing to pay the premiums for those strong brands because they really can uh, associate with uh, different kinds of values uh, that the brand offers. So strong brands that offer uh, superior benefits uh, always uh, have a chance to charge a premium pricing. Another um, the fact that we can extract from the conditions is that uh, there is a very strong uh, relationship between the brand loyalty and uh, the premium pricing. It is obvious that um, the loyal customers are uh, more willing to pay a premium pricing than those who are not really loyal with uh, your brand or with their uh, respective brands that uh, they usually buy in the marketplace. And it becomes the responsibility of the brand managers to keep on working 
along with uh, the, their uh, the colleagues uh, the, in the sales department, of course, uh, the, I they will never uh, lose a moment to uh, the, talk about the importance that uh, the salespeople um, have and uh, the significance of the relationship with which uh, the, you must um, strengthen all the time. So you you people, along with uh, the sales the managers and uh, their staff, uh, have the responsibility of seeing to it that uh, your customers could become more and more loyal to the brand because loyal customers are the ones who come uh, back to the brand and buy it over and over again. Factors that uh, drive loyalty are the ones that we must talk about because uh, loyal customers are the ones who are going to come back and back uh, to buy your brand over and over again. Then we must try to look into uh, what are the factors which drive loyalty because uh, the gaining loyalty for the brand is uh, one of the ultimate objectives of uh, any marketing people. Um, it is because of that loyalty that uh, you multiply your sales and you multiply your sales at a premium pricing. That's the basic fact. And uh, when that happens, well, it automatically leads to better profitability, uh, meaning better margins, and uh, the better financial results and better market value. So looking into the drivers uh, which are um, the backbone of uh, um, loyalty, uh, we have to uh, talk about those uh, one by one. After all, we must understand what those are. And is it that um, the one is more important than the other? Or is it that uh, all of those uh, have to work uh, at the same time in order to generate loyalty? So let us take a look at uh, all those factors uh, with the help of uh, a graphic illustration. The first one, as uh, you can see from uh, the, the illustration, is uh, the high quality performance. Now, keep in mind that uh, these uh, drivers, which I'm, you know, which I already have started talking about. Uh, are going to be talked about in terms of their importance. Now, this doesn't mean that uh, the, the first one which I'm going to talk about right now, the meaning of uh, the performance is uh, important and the one I'm going to talk about um, as the last one is not important. No, they're all very, very important. That is to be underlined. The only thing is uh, that some are more important than the others. So the first one is high quality performance. These drivers uh, are the ones in which the marketing people always have believed. And uh, the, the marketing people never believed that um, you can charge a premium pricing uh, only because you are a big company or you can charge a premium pricing only because the package uh, looks out of this world or you can charge a premium pricing because the channels that you have at your disposal are among the best within your uh, national market. No, uh, marketing people always believed in the drivers in the order of importance I'm going to talk about. And the beauty of these uh, uh, drivers uh, in relation to the order of importance is that this order has been testified through a research model. So this is the finding of a research model that uh, performance of the brand in terms of quality is uh, the most important to customers. So in other words, there is nothing else which is as important to customers as the quality. Now this uh, holds true not only in terms of uh, consumer consumables um, or FMCGs, this applies equally well to consumer durables. Uh, it has been uh, found through uh, the scientific research that customers always keep the quality and the performance factor on top of the list and that is something which really drives loyalty toward the brand. The second factor as you can um, see from um, the illustration is dependability. Um, with consistency. But your brand has got to be very dependable, uh, something consumers can depend on. Uh, they should not uh, be um, devoid of confidence uh, while they 
think of the buying the brand. They should be full of confidence that, uh, that the brand they're going to buy is uh, dependable and uh, that's the persona which you must create because if you have succeeded in creating that persona and uh, the people have started perceiving it the same way, it means that you have achieved the positioning for the brand. And uh, that is something which uh, makes it dependable. And uh, dependability also has to have uh, the element of consistency. It is not that uh, the brand is uh, the dependable today and it is not dependable tomorrow. The meaning the, the quality standards have got to be very consistent and uh, your standards have got to be uh, so stringent that uh, nothing goes uh, uh, unattended uh, during the, the manufacturing or uh, during the processing process uh, if you're dealing with food items or whatever you see. The, the third factor uh, in terms of uh, the importance uh, is uh, the long association. Uh, the people who were uh, interviewed uh, cited uh, their association uh, with the brand that they have been buying over a period of time, meaning over a long period of time as uh, one of the drivers towards loyalty. Now, it, is, it may not be as simple as uh, it uh, looks uh, on the face of it, a long association. What is it? Well, long association also is a function of uh, high performance on part of the brand, the very high quality of the brand, and uh, dependability with consistency. Uh, if you have uh, all these uh, the factors the built into the brand, the customer is bound to have a long association. The moment um, the, uh, the function uh, gets disturbed, whether something negative is going to happen, and uh, the customer is going to sever uh, his or her association with the brand. So this is uh, driver number three. Uh, driver number four, you will be amazed to know, driver number four is value for money. So value for money, in most of the cases, is not right on top. It may be the right on top in um, you know, the certain segments which really are uh, the very uh, the price conscious and uh, which carry products with minimal the differentiation. Uh, but uh, the overall, as part of the findings of uh, you know, an authentic research model, it has been found that value for money is driver number four. And uh, the value for money doesn't really mean that uh, you have a low price. Uh, it means that uh, the customer must be satisfied and uh, the customer must uh, perceive and a customer must realize that uh, he or she uh, has uh, gotten uh, full value the brand offers. And I keep repeating the definition of uh, the customer value, you know, but price the way they think and performance and service. Never lose sight of these three uh, the basic determinants of uh, customer value. Number four driver has been cited by respondents as fits personality. And uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why people choose the one brand in preference to another because they think they are buying a brand which really fits their personality. And uh, I recall a discussion uh, on uh, this factor which really uh, actuates the loyal customers to start referring their brand to others because they think uh, that uh, they really are in a position to influence their peers into the following them. I mean, brands are uh, so uh, strong and uh, become so powerful in the process that they influence uh, your psyche as a customer. And uh, you start behaving uh, just because you are buying and using a certain brand uh, as kind of a leader within your own social circle. And uh, you at times suggest, and at times you uh, start prescribing. You go also to that limit. You start telling, you think you really can influence, well, why don't you buy such and such product or such and such brand? It really uh, will fit your personality. And um, well, the one who refers the brand to somebody else, uh, they may not really talk in these terms, but that's what I mean. Uh, 
the communication that will take place between uh, the two the parties. Um, I'm basically referring to the brand power and uh, the ability of a brand to influence you uh, into influencing somebody else only because it really fits your personality and anybody else who is not using that brand is not you know, your cup of tea uh, in terms of fashions, in terms of thinking, in terms of uh, so many uh, different facets of your social behavior. Another uh, the driver which um, generates the loyalty toward uh, the brand and cited by the respondents is that it solves problems effectively. Well, if uh, the need that has been rightly identified, your brand is going to be uh, full of character, but the meaning it will have the right identity and uh, it will be positioned right. Uh, there are very strong chances, very strong chances that it will happen that way. And uh, once um, you have positioned it well and uh, it carries uh, the right set of promises and it also delivers those promises, then what is happening is it is solving uh, the problem effectively. And uh, that is one of the prime objectives of uh, the reason for being of any brand. I mean, a brand exists for that particular purpose. Good customer service has been cited as the next driver that generates loyalty toward a brand. It may look uh, the kind of uh, on the low side of uh, the list of uh, the important drivers, but it still remains the very important. And uh, like I pointed out in the beginning of um, you know, the discussion, although some of the drivers could they may look um, from your perspective uh, on the lower side of the list, uh, but nevertheless, they still remain very, very important. Uh, this is a finding, and uh, if you were uh, one of the respondents, you might have uh, looked at the questions in a little different way, uh, but uh, the fact remains that this is the, the finding of a collective effort. So good customer service in terms of, uh, you know, the transaction service, in terms of uh, the after sales service, um, the, the factors that uh, I talked about while um, discussing uh, the channels of distribution are of utmost importance and uh, you've got to see to it that uh, the good service is delivered because that's part of the customer value that you could generate and uh, that is something uh, which customer um, holds uh, very dear to himself or herself. The last um, factor uh, which uh, was cited by uh, the respondents is environmentally friendly. Uh, this is uh, one of the new things uh, which has come to the surface over the last, uh, I would say, you know, a couple of decades and uh, it is gaining more and more importance uh, all over the world. We keep uh, talking about products which are not really friendly with the environment and uh, in particular the, the shopping bags in relation to the our uh, market setup. Uh, that is one example. And uh, there are so many other things uh, which really uh, add to the solid waste. And uh, in the absence of uh, uh, an effective solid waste management, they become eyesores. Uh, so uh, the customers could really uh, would like to see to it that uh, a product is produced in a way that uh, its consumption, uh, final consumption, does not really lead to kind of a waste which is an eyesore or which really uh, disturbs the ecology uh, of the environment. So that is one factor which um, you know, the customers uh, hold dear to themselves. Uh, although at the bottom of the list, uh, in relation to the uh, research uh, that was carried out, and uh, I will again say that if you were to carry out this research, you might have added a few more questions. But uh, the basic idea of uh, talking about these uh, the drivers is 
what is it which really uh, drives the loyalty and uh, generating the loyalty uh, on part of the customers uh, is the responsibility of uh, the brand managers and brand managers uh, while creating the brands and while uh, planning uh, executions uh, of so many different strategies have got to be fully mindful of uh, these drivers and uh, if they really can uh, the build in uh, these uh, the drivers and their implications uh, into the, the planning and execution process, the chances are they will not fail. The order is significant and very convincing, like I mentioned. And I hope you find it convincing because it is part of a well-structured research, I mean, a research model. So what is it that you should do when you are wanting to determine uh, the price of your brand. You have to, to keep a very sharp focus on all these drivers and try to relate all these drivers to the segment or the segmental requirements uh, in relation to your brand. Again, you've got to be clear about the strategy of segmentation and the strategy of uh, the differentiation. And if you are clear about uh, those two strategies, uh, you know uh, who the target market is and uh, you know what the level of differentiation is and then you know uh, how much focus uh, you have to give on these drivers individually and then relate all those uh, with the pricing which you are going to build into the process. The more a company can generate these drivers, the stronger it is in terms of charging a better price. That is the conclusion in a way of the discussion that we have had so far. And another thing in you know, which really uh, this uh, the discussion uh, the testifies is the concept of uh, uh, value pyramid. I mean, why is it that uh, some brands really could make their way uh, all the way to the top? And there are certain brands that st stay uh, within the uh, the middle area of uh, the pyramid, uh, still offering uh, the good benefits to their customers, uh, but not really succeeding in creating those emotional values which really involve um, customers emotionally uh, toward themselves, the meaning the brands. And um, uh, these drivers, if understood very clearly and if generated very smartly, are the ones which um, really testify the concept of uh, brand value pyramid. In other words, we can also say that uh, we've got to be very consistent all along the road from um, the brand's vision to the picture, to contract, to positioning, to brand architecture, to communication, and to pricing. Unless we are consistent uh, and and are able to develop the right kinds of uh, relationships uh, between the different phases and different stages that we really cannot achieve the right strategy of pricing. Um, and uh, I would go to the extent of saying that the importance uh, of uh, being consistent uh, cannot be emphasized uh, more than here at the juncture of pricing. So when it comes to pricing, you start realizing all of a sudden uh, how important was it for you to have been consistent. And uh, if you really have been consistent in terms of uh, your strategic thinking uh, relating all the factors that I uh, just mentioned, then uh, your uh, the pricing problem is going to be solved uh, quite very amicably, I would say. Another factor which uh, we uh, really should talk about is that um, We've got to be very uh, consistent uh, in terms of uh, the product development. And uh, this also is uh, the kind of a summarized form of uh, the, what I talked about, um, the importance of being consistent. Now, this is uh, the product development, and we're talking about uh, consistency again in relation to product development. Uh, how can you be consistent in uh, relation to developing a product well, you can be consistent if you are uh, uh, right in identifying 
uh, the target market that you want to reach and uh, then uh, make all those factors that I just talked about fall in place uh, one by one and uh, you will come up with uh, a product which really is uh, very consistent and uh, which is the one that you want and therefore uh, you will go for the right most price. So in other words, uh, relating this consistency, this may not mean and this does not mean as a matter of fact that uh, you, know, you have to go for uh, a segment which is the top segment or you have to go for a price which is the premium price. In terms of consistency, you can take into consideration any segment which you think is um, uh, the one the offering opportunity and the one not being served very effectively by uh, the competition and uh, you are the one who um, would like to uh, fill that void and therefore uh, would like to come up with a price uh, which really belongs there. And uh, the, the right price uh, may not be a, a very high price. It uh, may be a kind of a premium price in relation to that particular segment, but it uh, may not be a very high price. So you, you've got to be uh, very sensitive to uh, the importance of being consistent in relation to developing your products and uh, products and brands are to be created in relation to uh, your uh, segments and uh, those segments are a function of differentiation. So uh, if you are in a position to develop these uh, relationships uh, very rightly and uh, very uh, honestly and practically then um, uh, your decisions about pricing will also be the right ones. We have uh, seen uh, how a premium pricing model uh, works and uh, under what conditions uh, it works and uh, what is it that uh, powerful brands uh, have to themselves uh, which really allow them to uh, charge that premium pricing. We now have to uh, look into uh, what really is the right model for your brand because uh, not everybody has a, a situation uh, which uh, offers uh, the conditions for uh, the premium pricing. So the question is uh, what is the right model and uh, what is the right price for uh, your brand? Well uh, before uh, we develop an understanding for uh, the right model uh, we have to know the common practice being undertaken by most of the businesses uh, all over the world in the marketplace and that practice is uh, what you call cost-based pricing. So in most of the cases, uh, the most of the businesses, in other words, go for pricing which is cost-based. Uh, what this basically means is that uh, they work out your cost in the first place. Uh, this is uh, what it has cost me in order to develop this product. The direct costs and uh, you also take into account the indirect costs and uh, then you come up with uh, a certain level at which you think they should be okay in terms of making the operation viable and uh, in terms of uh, achieving your uh, uh, financial objectives. Uh, that is uh, one of the standard practices undertaken by most of the businesses all over the world. The question is uh, whether you should start with that or not. Well, I will not give you any absolute answer, but my suggestion to you will be, you know, you must not jump to it immediately. There are so many different factors which you have to take into account before you start working out that pricing model, even on the basis which I've just talked about, meaning the basis which is in vogue by most of the companies. Now, this is not to say that what most of the companies are doing is wrong. All I'm saying is that you've got to have one objective uh, the while working out your price that you must not make any mistakes in uh, the working out uh, the pricing uh, which uh, doesn't really give you good margins. So in other words, even if your uh, the model is uh, you know, the cost based, you have to go for the A price which um, offers you a decent level of margin. I mean, if you were to sell something for the 100 rupees, and uh, by getting into the market, you realize um, within a few months of introducing the brand that the price should have been something like you know, 110. 
just look at uh, the difference uh, that the additional to the 10 rupees uh, that would have made in terms of the totality of uh, the contribution margin on the yearly basis and on the basis of your long-term plan, which is three years. Because uh, any the price increases that, uh, uh, that would have uh, been, or that would have uh, come into existence, would have uh, come into existence on the basis of that 110 and not 100, which you now realize was not the right price. So uh, this is what I meant by do not jump to uh, something which is uh, based on your costs and uh, you not, do not uh, make something um, a, a basis of your pricing which just enables you to go for uh, the minimal level of uh, returns. That may be a viable strategy, but then that may not be a very good strategy. Uh, the right kinds of moves that okay, we should be making, and okay, before we make those moves, okay, what are the uh, fundamentals, uh, just a few fundamentals okay, which we should okay, have in our mind okay, before proceeding further, I'm going to talk about in the next lecture because uh, the time for this lecture seems to be uh, coming to an end. And uh, before I uh, proceed further, I would like to give you a recap of uh, what I've talked about in today's lecture. Do not lose sight of the fact that uh, you've got to go for a price which is a decent price. Now, this is a very generalized kind of a terminology. Uh, you should try to go for a premium price the way you define it premium and uh, you should try to go for a margin, uh, which is uh, a good margin and uh, which allows you to um, not only uh, generate uh, the good returns, uh, meaning just about viable returns, uh, but profitable uh, numbers. And uh, there are certain conditions uh, which uh, uh, have to be there uh, to um, allow you to go for that premium pricing and uh, after uh, having an, uh, understood uh, what really are those conditions uh, which allow you to go for that premium, uh, we just started discussing uh, what could be the right model when uh, we have to cut our discussion here. So let us wait until the next lecture and uh, I will I thank you for your patience and uh, look forward to talking with you in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz.